Tourism is clearly a big part of Thailand's economy. Globally, Phuket is actually the third most popular beach island destination in the world, and it's leading the way for the country of Thailand to reopen. You've probably seen videos of empty streets and closed businesses in tourist towns during COVID-19, but what can people expect to see when they visit post-COVID-19? My name is Asa Marsh, and in this video we're going to discuss the Thai tourism and real estate recovery with globally recognised hospitality, tourism and real estate advisor Bill Barnett. He's the managing director of C9 Hotel Works and the founding advisor of the Phuket Hotel Association. Before we go any further, please show your support by liking and subscribing to this video. What do you think people can expect when they come to uh, Phuket as a tourism destination? Phuket is open. I think people have to understand. They see pictures of empty beaches. They see pictures of uh, empty streets as well. This is not the real Phuket. You know, again, what, why do people come to Phuket for tourism? The, you know, again, there's great experiences. You're able to do things as a normal tourist would. Yeah. If things are open. Street food is here. Uh, restaurants are open as well. You can do activities in the ocean as well. So all of these experiences are open and Phuket's ready to welcome back tourists. So what do you think this means for uh, the investment market and more specifically the investment market surrounding tourism? I think you know, certainly Phuket for resort grade real estate is probably the leading um, uh, tertiary market in, in Asia. You know, certainly in terms of about three to four billion dollars of high-end villas on this island, there's a demonstrated long history over the past 20 years of premium real estate. I think what we'll see is a lot of pent-up demand. Over the past 14 to 16 months, we've seen domesticated demand driving things. We've seen a lot of Bangkokians come in and buying large luxury villas as well. Projects like the Anantara, the Avadina Hills, they've seen a lot of transactions to Thai buyers out of Bangkok at big numbers. You know, you're talking five to ten million dollars. I think in terms of the broader real estate, I think this is people want to come to Phuket and see the properties. So when we talk to developers like Laguna, they say there's, they have a lot of transactions ready. People want to do the final check on it. They want to do due diligence. They want to touch and feel it as well. So that's what's pending transactions. So I think, again, you're going to see people who want to come back. And these are early people who are traveling to Phuket. People are saying it's too difficult under the sandbox to come back. But I mean, under these rules, when people want to come and do business, this is an ideal time for investors to come back into the market. I mean, the, what I've seen is a massive increase in buyers that are looking for lifestyle property. They want a villa to live in. Uh, they want somewhere that they can call home, away from home. This is a this is a trend we're seeing every. You know, we cover all the Asian markets. We're seeing this in Bali. We're seeing this in in some of the Malaysian resort markets. Certainly here in Thailand, we're seeing. You know, the COVID lifestyle change. Now you can work from home. You can conduct your daily meetings on Zoom. People, there's a, a big generator of demand certainly is Phuket's international schools. We're seeing people come in from what's happened in Hong Kong, uh, you know, certainly with political issues there. They're saying maybe we'll go make a base in Phuket, even from Bangkok with the, with the worsting air pollution as well. Lifestyle. I think the one thing that COVID-19 has done for everybody is to make them reassess their lives and lifestyle. And that's an important shift and people feel that destination like Phuket, which has a lot of greenery, has a lot of outdoor spaces, this is perfect for COVID-19. Uh, type scenario to kind of live a healthier life. You know, real estate developers used to focus on these small hotel style boxes, um, and I'm guilty of selling yeah. enough of them. It's um, get me out of the box now. I think, I, <laughs> I think one thing coming from hospitality and real estate is get me out of the box. People are gonna, we're gonna see smaller projects, we're gonna see more boutique projects come up. People want more spaces as well. I think they want more public spaces. So in terms of those uh, big box uh, type condo hotels, I think we'll see less of those and we'll see more bespoke projects. Um, okay, so what's your prediction of businesses opening up slowly but surely, or do you think we're ba gonna see? This is baby steps and we're learning to travel again. We're looking at the beginning of a new real estate cycle. We're looking at the beginning of a new travel cycle. People say, what is Phuket gonna go back to where it was in time? possibly three to four years, it's going to take, you know, again, Phuket's blessed with geography. We're within six to eight hours of about a third of the world's population. So that metric's not going to change. Are people going to travel as much in time? But it's going to be step by step to get there. So certainly in terms of tourism, we'll see people travel. You know, we've seen in the U.S., we've seen in, in Europe right now, people can't wait to travel again, but it's certainly not going to be just falling over and saying we're back to where we were. Again, Everything works in cycles. Real estate's the same way as is tourism. 
So who do you think we can expect to see traveling to Phuket first? I mean, that's the main thing is we'll see long haul travel. We'll see highly vaccinated countries. We'll see where airlift. You can't stay there if you can't get there. Mm. So right now we're seeing flights coming in from the UK. We're seeing flights coming in from Germany, uh, from North America as well through Singapore. The Middle East carriers are boom for Europe. So we're seeing those spins. Right now for Asia, unfortunately, Asia has mass outbreaks all across Asia. And you have to consider if I come from Singapore, even though I come to the sandbox, when I go back, I'll have 21-day quarantine. Wow. For the UK, we're still on amber status. We'd like to be back to green status, but that's not happened yet. So it's a two-way street. So much of Phuket, Phuket can offer and say we are reopened. But at the end of the day, there has to be demand there. The, the one positive sign is there is demand. There's people trying to get flights. There's people booking uh, for their certificates of re-entry. There is demand. I mean, the worst case of the scenario is to reopen and there is no demand. But there is overwhelming demand of people who want to come back. But these are not your typical travelers. These are people who maybe own businesses, live part-time in, in Thailand, and want to come back first. These are the arrivals. Lifestyle travelers. Yes. That's, that's basically the trend that we see as well. The Easy Live in Phuket, we have a few different arms to the business. Um, we have the real estate arm, we have the media arm, but also we have the insurance arm as well. So A lot of need for that. I think that's, <laughs> that's a whole new regime for people living here as well for people coming in. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for us, I mean, I think real estate has um, obviously not been moving as quickly as, uh, as we'd like, but the insurance side of things has, has taken off. And I think insurance will be incorporated uh, into travelers coming into Thailand for the foreseeable future. I think maintenance will be big issues. People who are buying existing properties who want to have a good look, these properties might not be occupied for a while. There's going to be, you know, certainly uh, energy costs as well. You know, anything which is environmentally friendly. People who understand and buy villas here now understand the real cost of running this. I think we're seeing a lot more green projects. We're seeing solar come into projects. Uh, it's a good thing to do. It's the right thing to do, but it's also a wise thing economically to do because these these villas can be expensive to maintain. So, okay, let's let's look at the the future. And okay, there's obviously a lot of uh, property, existing property that needs to be sold, and that's for sale. However, for a uh, new project, uh, you you touched on 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 green energy and and uh, sustainable properties. What do you think we're going to be seeing for new developments? We've uh, seen Land future? Green come in, certainly with an environmental ethos as well. We've seen Trivananda, which is, a, again, an integrative wellness community, which has a, a, you know, good infrastructure for green and environmentally friendly practices. So certainly developers are acknowledging this is important now, not just because it's good, because it's making money sense. Do you think yes. it's just a gimmick to make more sales, or do I you think, think it's going to be something that we I think it's continue? sustainable, because at the other day, if, you, if you're running a big villa, your single biggest cost is electricity. And electricity, you know, again, you're able to sell back energy to the grid now in Phuket, you know, working wow. together, you're able to get licensing for that. It makes sense. It might be a three to four year payback, but a great payback long term.